God wants to give you his righteousness. That's what it's all about. But of course, to Gentiles and Jews, there's a problem, but quite a different problem. To Gentiles, the problem is their own unrighteousness. But with Jews, the problem is their righteousness. And I don't know which is the more difficult group to deal with. Yes, I do. Good people are far harder to get into the kingdom than bad people. The self-righteous are really impossible. I once went to preach or to speak at the Baptist Women's League. That's not my scene. I feel like a lion in a den of Daniels in the Baptist Women's League. But I went there and a very, a very large personable lady came over to me and, and she said, uh, are you the speaker for this afternoon? I said, yes. She said, what are you going to speak on? I said, grace. Oh, she said, that sounds nice. So I got up to speak and there they all were. And I said, I just want to tell you two things about grace. Number one, grace means that your bad deeds need not keep you out of heaven. All the ladies smiled at this young minister. They liked this. That was good. I said, secondly, your good deeds will not help you to get to heaven. And their faces fell. And they didn't like me. I said, that's what grace means. And this dear chair lady came up to me afterwards, or chairperson, should I say, came up to me afterwards, and she said, uh, you trying to tell me that all the good things I've ever done have been wasted? I said, no, they weren't wasted for others, other people. They helped others, but they won't help you, no. She said, I thought that's what you said. And she never spoke to me again. I never got invited back to that meeting, and that was it. See, that's the offense of the righteousness of God. Because what it really is saying is that you've got to repent of your good deeds. Now, unfortunately, most people, when they hear the word repentance, think of all the bad deeds they should repent of. But no, the harder thing is to repent of good deeds. And to repent of your good deeds, that takes some doing. But you remember what I said? Paul said when he considered his righteousness, he felt it was human dung. My, that takes a bit of saying. The prophet Isaiah was equally blunt he said something more appropriate to the ladies, as Paul's remarks were for the men. What Isaiah said was, your righteousness is like a menstrual cloth. That's not something you want to parade in public. Now the Bible is saying that your righteousness can be the biggest barrier between you and the righteousness of God. And it's far harder. There's a revival going on in the British prisons right now. Did you know that? God is really moving in the prisons of our land. He's going to bring out real evangelists out of the prisons. You know, we'll, we're going to have spiritual porridge all over the land. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? I mean, a friend of mine, when he was converted, he repented of his sins. He went to the police. He confessed to a crime that had never been discovered. And uh, he went, found himself in court. And because he'd confessed it, the judge gave him the lightest sentence of two months. And he went in, he told everybody about Jesus. They called him the bishop. But after two months, he had to leave his disciples. So he went back to the police, confessed another crime, got back in. <laughs> and he, he told me, he said, I'm the only evangelist in Britain entirely financed by Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> but he's now a well-known national evangelist whose name most of you would have heard of. But uh, God's doing this. It's so much easier for people like that to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, a television station in Canada that was broadcasting to the whole of Canada foolishly said to me, the director said, you can talk about anything you like for 20 minutes. I said, I'm going to talk about the kingdom of God. And his face fell. He said, now it's a commercial channel. We've got to keep them interested and switched on. I said, that's what I want to talk about. It's my favorite subject and it was Jesus' favorite subject too. He said, all right. And I looked into the camera lens and just spoke for 20 minutes about the kingdom. There were telephones in the studio for people to ring in. The first telephone went and a woman's voice said, Hello, I'm a hooker. That's a prostitute over there on Yonge Street, Toronto. She said, I've been wa watching your program. And she said, I've got a question to ask. I said, what's your question? She said, how could I get into that kingdom, please? I said, why do you want to get in? She said, it's time I got my life straightened out. I thought, hallelujah, I'm preaching the right gospel at last. Because you can tell, if good people like the preaching, you're preaching the wrong gospel. 
If bad people like it, you're getting near it. Do you understand? And the gospel is the gospel of the righteousness of God. You don't have to produce any of your own. It's all available to you in Christ. That's great news, isn't it? But it's bad news for those who have been in all the voluntary services and, you know, been in Rotary and done so many good things. They're so hard to reach with the gospel because they've just got too much goodness of their own. And real repentance means you turn away from your bad deeds and you turn away from your good deeds. I rarely hear preachers say, repent of your good deeds. But I tell you, the good deeds are more likely to keep people out of heaven than anything else. Because you feel good. You know, it's very rare in a prayer meeting that I ever hear anyone asking for mercy. Which is tragic. Because God is so full of it that as soon as you ask for it, you get it. It's the one prayer you can be sure will be answered. But people need to feel they're pretty bad before they beg for mercy. So we ask for guidance and blessing and all the rest because we don't think we're really bad enough to beg for mercy. But when God hears a prayer, God be merciful to me, a sinner, the gates of heaven fling wide open. He can't resist that kind of prayer. He's too full of mercy. You find the word mercy all the way through Romans. God is longing to give us his righteousness. He says, here, have some of mine. You'll never have enough of your own. So when you preach the gospel of righteousness, the problem with Gentiles is their unrighteousness. And they need to have a desire for righteousness to come to Christ. But the problem with Jews is they've got too much righteousness. And they say, I'm good enough. <laughs>